Hello everyone, in this video I'll be taking a look at Zubin 2.2004, which is codenamed Focal Fusa. This is a long-term support release of Zubin 2, which is supported for the next three years, although the underlying Ubuntu operating system will be supported for five years. So it chooses the XFCE desktop and has the Linux kernel 5.4. Although I'm not sure this release of Zubin 2 is very good at the moment, but don't take my word for this, take the word of the Zubin 2 release notes. I have to go down to known issues. Users with AMD graphics may experience significant graphical issues and should consider waiting until the release of 2004.1 later this year. And there's another issue that window decoration is not displayed for type VNC server. Although I can imagine that's a significantly smaller number of users who are remoting to their desktop versus those who are using an AMD GPU. Now, unfortunately I can't test that because I only have Nvidia GPUs. I've got an AMD CPU but NVIDIA GPU. Now this release has seen the demise of the 32-bit version. This is a wider thing with Ubuntu that 32-bit CPUs are no longer being supported. Although Steam, which is 32-bit, will still run thanks to the fact that Canonical are still supporting a core number of 32-bit libraries. One positive I want to mention here is there is a new minimal version available. A core version of Ubuntu now, unlike the other derivatives, this is supplied as a separate install, whereas all the other derivatives, with the exception of Lubin 2, are a tick box in the system installer. So you think, great, so that'll be a smaller ISO file to download. And indeed it is, at 818 meg, which is just slightly above a CD size. Thanks. But this did not go well for me at all. In fact, it went so bad to the point that I thought my ISO file was corrupt. Although it wasn't, because I compared the SHA-256 sum to this, and it matched. It literally took me three attempts and about two hours to get the core installer on my system, whereas the normal installer took less than 10 minutes and worked first time. Yeah, I can't understand how a small install could take so long, but you could actually see progress because uh, rather than having a slideshow at the end of the installer, it was a command line output, and yet you could see lines gradually progressing on it. Anyway, this is the core install, and um, <laughs> yeah, something's clearly gone wrong here. <laughs> I've got an additional 537 meg volume. Now, whether that's an issue with the installer. But anyway, that issue aside, let's take a look at why it is a core install. And looking at the selection of applications we get under the accessories, well, that's a small list. And under multimedia, you get volume control. And that is it. Settings are the core XFCE utilities. And, and I should have mentioned this is XFCE 4.14, which is now fully using the GTK3 toolkit and has better support for high definition displays. And there's even a new monitor arrangement tool and promise of reduced tearing. One new feature I'm looking at here is the new screensaver, which is a feature in XFCE 4.14. You can choose from a small selection of screensavers and now it appears to be about this many screensavers on the full install. That is a nice feature, but uh, I don't tend to use screensavers. Uh, well, I either have the screen go off entirely or my system gets locked. Yeah, I don't tend to bother with screensavers now. There's an updated notification menu. You can select do not disturb if you don't want to see any notifications from applications. And there's a few settings you can tweak within there. If I go across to terminal and do the old favorite 3-M, memory usage is about 100 meg lower on the core install. Interesting, it's not very high at all really. 400 meg, 500 meg for the full version. Anyway, a command I wanted to run was snap list, so we can confirm how many snaps are installed on the system. Well, actually, this mirrors the normal install of zero snaps installed by default. Although you can use snaps, but I'll show you in a moment that the theming is not very good at all in XFCE. The Linux kernel is version 5.4, which is a long-term support release kernel, and that comes with a new lockdown feature, which makes it a lot more difficult for exploits to happen under the root user. And it also comes with the WireGuard VPN, which has been backported from kernel 5.6. So just showing the feature there, you can move the applications to halves and quarters of the screen. So yeah, yeah, it's nice and responsive. I have to admit it is a nice responsive desktop to use and with the application launcher, you can type to search for applications and the results start appearing straight away. I can even navigate around with the keyboard or mouse. Anyway, application I'm gonna show you here is the screenshot application and yeah, I captured the entire screen. And you've got the option now of saving onto Imga or saving to your hard drive or copying to clipboard. 
So yeah, just save to hard drive. <laughs> save another screenshot, why not? Looking at the application themings, we've got a choice between Greybird or Greybird Dark. Greybird Dark, well, does seem to look okay at first glance, but what is that going on around the edge of the application? Why does the application title just a bit look a bit difficult to read? I, I don't know. That seems to be the uh, part that ruins it for me. At least it's quite easy to see where the scroll bar is. That seems a very obvious scroll bar to me. I think other than the application title bar, this seems to be an okay dark theme, but I will go back to the lighter theme. I did mention the snaps earlier, uh, the theming in snaps. What has happened here? So this is about as bad as it has been in Ubuntu, although the GNOME, Mate and KDE desktops have all improved. They seem to have a much more seamless integration with snaps. We've got things like Chromium, which incidentally you can't install a dev version of Chromium now, you're stuck with a snap version of Chromium. Yeah, you've got the mouse cursor changes colour. Inkscape looks alright though. I installed gedit, I hope this is gedit anyway. Yes that is, and yeah that looks fine. Yeah that looks fine. VLC, well that definitely does not look fine either. But it's funny, if you leave a menu open and then move the mouse cursor away, you can keep this awful black mouse cursor onto other applications. Yeah, it's only when you highlight another application does it turn back to what it should be. <laughs> I, don't, I just thought that was weird. So. Multiple mouse cursor colours. Yeah, that, that just ruins it for me. Get the theming and integration sorted. Come on. Other desktops have managed this. I know it's not perfect with snaps, but, but GNOME, Mate, and KDE have all improved. Looking at the list of snaps I have here, I've ended up with the GTK themes on there, so that probably explains why gedit and Inkscape looked all right. But all those snaps I installed. Although if you're looking to install new software, this is the GNOME Software Center, although slightly different to the version that comes with Ubuntu, which is a snap, this is a dev version. Searching for KDN Live shows the snap application first in the list and the dev version second. And this is a similar story with snaps being favoured over and above the dev packages on the home page. I think these editor picks applications are snaps. Yeah, there's one there. Oh, let's try another one. What, what is this? NC spot. Don't know it. Uh, come on. Let's scroll down. What is it? Oh, who'd have thought it? It's a snap. Canonical are definitely trying to push people to using snaps. There's nothing to stop you installing dev packages. You just got to look in second place on this. Taking a look at the Funar file manager, it is not exactly the most feature rich file manager we have in Linux, although it does at least have the option of tabbed browsing. Uh, it's just a bit of a faff to get to. It's, I would have thought that middle clicking on a folder in most file managers would open it into a new tab, but no. Although I can right click on it and go open a new tab. Yeah, that does the job. You can type in a location to navigate to, and it doesn't actually have to be on the same computer. You can go via a network drive, so SSH, for example. And yeah, let's take a look. What can I do here? I can copy something off, a uh, TV drive, uh, software. Let's have a look at a game. Uh, yeah, I'll copy Euphoria over. Ooh, I've not played that in quite a long time. Yeah, I'm sure it's a download. Yeah, paste that there. So it does the job, but it's basic. It does have the ability to change view here, so it can view as a detailed list or a normal list, but that is a per application basis, not a per folder basis. So I find that a bit limiting really. Yeah, well actually a per tab basis, because if I close that and uh, open up again, yeah, that's how it uh, seems to be here. Anyway, what to say about this? Well, development of the XFCE desktop has always progressed at a snail's pace, and that isn't necessarily a problem. It's, I would rather have stability over aggressive development. But this release of Zubuntu 20.04 just doesn't seem to be complete, really. I, mean, I would have expected them to get the AMD graphics drivers working, and uh, yeah, yeah, don't do that either. Oh, okay, that was the colour settings has just crashed an application that I'd already closed. That's the first crash I've seen. The part that's working seems to be nice and stable, other than that uh, small part of the settings that just crashed. And I'll say that seems to be incomplete. I don't know what it is. Is that uh, lack of developers for this release? Um, that is a shame if that was the case. Does its job? It's basic, it's still lightweight. Yes, you can't get it for 32-bit computers, but that's the way that Ubuntu have gone. 
Anyway, that was a look at the Zubin 2004. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.